good to sound. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Holy Family Graduate Commencement. I'm Dr. Sylvia McGeary. I'm the Chief of Staff here. And on behalf of the administration, our faculty and staff, and all of our students, I'd like to congratulate all of you on your accomplishment today, moms and dads and spouses and children and even grandchildren in some cases. Congratulations, this is a great day. And what we figured out was if Taylor Swift could perform in the rain, we could do this, right? Yep, yep. So, so just a couple of things before we get our procession started. I just want you to know that we have um, portable restrooms out in the back there under that white tent if anyone needs to avail themselves of that. There's also an accessible restroom right inside the building. So if anyone needs that kind of accessibility, please go ahead and help yourselves. Um, we are also very, very proud to have with us this morning our Holy Family student nurses who are here manning our first aid tent. They're among some of Philadelphia's best medical professionals, so we are in good hands if you wind up having to walk back to that tent in the, in the, on the other side of the walkway. Um, as far as everything else goes, we're inviting you to just sit back and enjoy and to celebrate this wonderful day. All of you have been a tremendous part in bringing your students and, and candidates for these, these graduate degrees here to Holy Family at this time. So our procession will start in a couple of minutes, um, just trying to maneuver through the rain.
Good morning. I'm Dr. Shelley Robbins, Vice President for Academic Affairs, and I would like to welcome you to the 66 Commencement Exercises of Holy Family Univ University. <clears throat> Please stand now for America the Beautiful, sung by Eric Nelson, followed by the invocation prayer. I ask the men who are present to please remove your hats. Good morning. Let us bow our heads. Loving God, we come before you today asking you to bless the class of 2023. Bless our faculty, parents, spouses, children, relatives, and friends who have supported us, believed in us, and encouraged us along the way. We thank you for the many sacrifices made. Today's commencement, which was once just a dream, brings this momentous accomplishment into fruition for us. As we turn our tassels, accept our degrees, and set off to pursue our dreams, may we be called to opportunities that only align with the purpose that you have set for our lives. Give us the strength to confidently walk our next journey as our authentic selves knowing that we are qualified and capable. And when the going gets rough, when a loved one is sick or struggling, when relationships are strained, when we are under pressure or overwhelmed, when it seems that no one understands, remind us that we are resilient and that you will continue to carry us through, for you have done so time and time again. Bless this class of 2023 to create, inspire, educate, inform, and uplift. Give us the courage to speak up, inquire, and bring forth new ideas and approaches. May we break ground and barriers and be a blessing to others with nothing but gratitude and praise for all that you have done and all that you will do in God's name. Amen. Thank you both. Please be seated.
Dr. Prisco, Mr. Bill Mandia, the Chair of the Board of Trustees, members of the board who are present this morning, honored guests, university faculty, administration, and staff, parents, families, and friends, and the members of the class of 2023, welcome to the graduate commencement ceremony of Holy Family University. We are so very happy to be celebrating with you here today at our beautiful Newtown campus, becoming more beautiful by the gift of rain. <clears throat> I know that you have come here thinking that this is the grand finale. You've worked really hard, and this is the culmination of your efforts. But we don't call this event culmination. We call it commencement. And commencement means beginning. So while we are marking the end of your college days, we're really celebrating the beginning of your work in the world. Today is the day you begin your life as a nurse practitioner, as an educational leader, as a psychologist or a counselor, a leader of business, as a person who promotes justice and kindness and all the values reinforced in you throughout your Holy Family education. As you go into the world today, take with you the spirit and mission of Holy Family University, guided by our motto, tenior votus, I am bound by my responsibilities. Take that motto with you to build the world we cannot imagine today. Take what you have learned and the skills you have developed to create a culture of love and hope and recognize every day the oneness of the human family and transform this world in which we live. This is the beginning of your professional life. And when you make your mark on the world, think of us. We're going to be here watching you and feeling very proud of you. I now invite Mr. Bill Mandia, Chair of Holy Family University's Board of Trustees, to the podium to give authority for the conferral of today's degrees. Good morning. I have the privilege on behalf of the Board of Trustees to convey the Board's approval of the awarding of these honorary degrees, doctoral degrees, and master's degrees to be conferred here today. I now invite Dr. Ann Prisco, President of Holy Family University, to present the candidate for honorary degree. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. It is with great pride that we begin our ceremonies today by honoring Thomas R. Bailey, PhD, who's currently serving as president of Teachers College, Columbia University. I'd like to tell you a little bit about Dr. Bailey. He has served on the Teachers College faculty for the past 30 years and is the Georgian Abby O'Neill Professor of Economics and Education. An economist with specialties in education, labor economics, and econometrics, Dr. Bailey is widely regarded as one of the nation's leading authorities on community colleges. In 1996, he established the Community College Research Center at Teachers College with support from the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation. Since 1992, he has also been director of the Institute on Education and the Economy at the college. Dr. Bailey also has directed three national centers funded by grants from the Institute of Education Sciences the Center for Analysis of Post-Secondary Education and Employment, established in 2011, and Center for the Analysis of Post-Secondary Readiness, established in 2014. From 2006 to 2012, Dr. Bailey also directed the National Center for Post-Secondary Research. Dr. Bailey earned his undergraduate degree in economics from Harvard University and his PhD in labor economics from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. 
On a personal note, I had the good fortune to have Dr. Bailey as both a teacher and a mentor, and I witnessed his dedication to educational opportunity and his call for holistic education, which is foundational to the experience we shape for students here at Holy Family. We are proud to honor Thomas R. Bailey, PhD, for his servant leadership in higher education. The Doctor of Humane Letters is the highest honor the university bestows and is presented to individuals whose contributions to the public good warrant exceptional recognition. Dr. Bailey is a shining example of an individual whose impact our community deserves recognition. We proudly bestow the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa, upon Thomas R. Bailey, PhD. Dr. Bailey, would you please come to the stage? Congratulations. I know I never get to do this. I am pleased to accept the candidate, Thomas R. Bailey, PhD, for the, for the degree of director, for the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa, and hereby admit him to all the honors, rights, and privileges pertaining to this degree. Congratulations. Thank you, President Prisco. I'm really honored. I was delighted when, when she called me up to uh, invite me to accept this, and I said, of course, I'd be happy to do it. Now, I'm, uh, I live in New York. I've lived in New York most of my life. Um, I uh, was born in Washington, but I actually have very deep roots to eastern Pennsylvania. So how many of you are from eastern Pennsylvania? Some of you? OK. Well. I, uh, my father went to Temple University. I went to high school uh, in, West, in Westchester. And actually, my parents, uh, they passed away. But before they did, they lived uh, just a few miles from here in Gwynedd. And I've got to say that when I, uh, when I came to visit them, I passed. I, I, the road I took down today was the same road that I took to go visit them. So I feel, to some extent, like I'm coming home. Now, I actually, as, as, as President Prisco said, I have another connection here. Now, I'm an economist, so I'm looking around for um, some economics things to write, and this is one I ran into. During, this is, I'm gonna read you a little economics here. During the 1980s, ways differentials increased in many countries, leading to a plethora of studies that examined this trend. Rising wage inequality was not, however, detected in Italy. Rather, wage setting mechanisms have produced a compressed wage structure Moreover, Italy has a surprisingly small percentage of university graduates, a situation termed the education gap. Due to institutional developments that have occurred in the 1980s and 90s, it's a, it is anticipated that the wage compression will attenuate and return to higher education, higher education strengthen. I won't read the whole dissertation, but the, the results indicate that there has been an increase in overall wage inequality and the rate of growth in wage differentials was similar to the rates evidenced in the United States and Great Britain. Now, does anybody know who that economist was who wrote that? So that was your president, Ann Prisco, one of my favorite students. So let's give her a round of applause. I'm sure that she deserves it. All right, well, now I can talk, start my talk here. So, Gra welcome graduates of 2023. So let's give yourselves a well-deserved round of applause, please. Okay, now, well, well, while you deserve that, this one is more important because it's important that most of you have been helped by parents, siblings, spouses, friends, colleagues, and of course, your wonderful Holy Family faculty and staff and the sisters of the Holy Family. So this is even more important. So let's give them all a round of applause, please. Come on, let's go. All right. All right. So terrific. You're awesome. 
And, and you have just illustrated one of life's most important lessons. Success in nearly all human endeavors results from people working together. Or, as a wonderful Ethiopian saying puts it, when spiders unite, they can tie down a lion. Now, this is a lesson I've been reminded of throughout my life. My parents, who were devout Quakers, taught me that the, va the value of listening and building consensus. I felt bound by the responsibilities my parents had taught me uh, through this important lesson to ensure that I always listened to those around me and attempted to reach decisions that reflected everybody's input. It was an important lesson that, I, that has served me well in my life, especially now as the president of Teachers College. Often it's difficult to get something that everybody agrees with, but we continue to try that. It also served me well before I became president as the director of the Community College Research Center at Teachers College. It was in that role that I worked together with teams of researchers to uncover how our nation's community colleges could serve their students. I wanted to stress the word together. As a researcher who has spent most of my career working on the effectiveness of our country's community colleges, I submit that genuine improvement comes from working together as a team in the laboratory of the real world, there are false starts, failed experiments, new threats, and shifts in leadership and public opinion. Sometimes it seems that we are going backwards. Yet, ultimately, nothing is insurmountable if we work together. For many years, many community college faculty, administrators, and staff have been working hard to improve student outcomes. And while many individual reforms and experiments produced limited successes, we were not seeing significant improvements in the overall institutional performance. We found that many community colleges were what we called cafeteria colleges, colleges in which there were lots of resources, but individual students, faculty, and advisors had to take the initiative on their own to find their own pathways through complex environments and to, and to use and modal, mobilize the available resources effectively. As an outcome of this research, we developed the Guided Pathways Model, a comprehensive model that redesigns academic programs and provides services to support students from application to graduation to employment. It is designed to promote communication and collaboration across and among academic and administrative departments. It provides a framework that colleges can adapt to their own circumstances. You might wonder, how does this apply to me as a new graduate? Well, in developing the Guided Pathways model, it took a lot of time and contributions from each member of the, of the team to develop our model, just as it took time and, and a team to help you make it to this day. And to be most successful in the future, you will find that it takes the con continuous support of a team to achieve whatever you set out to do, no matter what your career path. Now, there are three points. <coughs> we learn from developing the Guided Pathways model <clears throat> that can be applied to any of the journeys that lie ahead of you. First, we did not dream up these ideas on our own. Rather, we formed collaborative partnerships with policymakers, fellow reformers and researchers, and community college administrators, faculty members, faculty members, guidance counselors, and students themselves. We listened carefully and came to understand their concerns, their everyday realities, and some of the imaginative solutions that they were developing. By listening and building consensus, we reflected back to them what they told us in a framework that pulled all the elements together in, in ways that they could use. Second, we realized that we needed many perspectives and methodologies to address the issues. So we turned to our colleagues in other departments at Teachers College, and we became a multidisciplinary center. In this way, we were better equipped as a team to tackle the issues that many, uh, from many different angles. Finally, third, we became a learning community, a learning community where all of us, students, faculty, researchers, and staff, were both learners and teachers. We learned not only about the substance of the work, but also about how to develop projects, how to interact with funders and practitioners, and how to work together. 
Like cafeteria colleges, we each had many areas of excellence, but like cafeteria colleges, we are not individually equipped equipped to take full advantage of the potential comprehensiveness of our existence and diversity unless we all work together. Together, our full potential can come through as the power of we and the need to combine our efforts has never been more relevant. <clears throat> the world is facing unprecedented challenges from global warming to widening wealth gap to the rise of authoritarianism abroad and violence here in the United States. But the biggest challenge is polarization and its drivers, misunderstanding, fear, hatred, the hallmarks of all periods of great strife. Think about those hallmarks of strife for a moment, misunderstanding, fear, and hatred. These words are enough to induce trepidation and prompt reflection on the merits of searching for a nice, quiet life lived in solitude. But remember, we each possess the ability to impact change. And when we come together to impact change by listening and building consensus, we become a, com a compassionate, powerful voice in the world. As the great American Trappist monk and theologian Thomas Merton once wrote, compassion is the keen awareness of interdependence of things. Consider that for a moment. Compassion is the keen awareness of the interdependence of things. Through the power of we, we become an unstoppable force bound by our responsibilities with strong, unique qualities, and we each possess to come together to improve our communities, our states, our countries, and the world. We need to do this compassionately through listening, building consensus, sometimes being the learner or the teacher, and other times the researcher or the participant. No matter what role we play, we do so aware that all the roles are necessary to impact change. Remember that the spiders work together to tie down the lion. If you remember this lesson, you will be well equipped to lead us in tying down the lions of our era. As Holy Family Motto says, I am bound my by my responsibilities. So take your responsibilities to share your knowledge, your skills, and your passion and work with those around you to make us, all of us, better. You've got this. This is your moment. We need you now more than ever. Thank you. So we pronounced. Thank you, Dr. Bailey, for your reflections and for honoring us with your presence here today. Here for Dr. B Dr. Bailey. Okay. It gives me great pleasure to ask the candidates for Doctor of Psychology and Counseling Psychology. Doctor of Education and Doctor of Nursing Practice, the class of 2023, to please rise. Dr. Prisco, I have the honor to present for the degrees Doctor of Psychology and Counseling Psychology, Doctor of Education, and Doctor of Nursing Practice, these candidates to be named who have fulfilled all of the requirements of Holy Family University and who have been recommended by its faculty and who have been approved by its Board of Trustees. Please welcome Dr. Jennifer DiCicco, Acting Dean of the School of Arts and Sciences, who will present our Doctor of Psychology candidates. As per tradition, doctoral candidates will receive their doctoral hoods from their dissertation chairs.
with a degree in Doctor of Psychology, Counseling Psychology, Sanjay Dindial. Jasmine S. Rowling. <laughs> I invite the candidates for Doctor of Education to please come forward. Dr. Patricia Jorgensen, Acting Dean for the School of Education, will present the Doctor of Education candidate. For the degree of Doctor of Education in Leadership and Professional Studies, Christy Lynn Nober. Renisha Shante Shepherd. Elena Toselli. Kimberly A. Bonani. I invite the candidates for Doctor of Nursing Practice to please come forward. Dr. Margaret Harkins, Dean of the School of Nursing and Health Sciences, will present the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Nursing Practice. I invite the candidates for the Doctor of Nursing Practice to please come forward. Nancy Wilson. Amanda Lucy Caterino. <laughs> Sheena Howard. Mindy Subaya.
Kimberly Page Bishop. Artemisa Ballad Lodge. Lisa Abdul Hack. Cassandra Alexandre. Lenia Marcia Gilman. Renew Elsa Stephen. Class of 2023, master's degree candidates, please rise. <laughs> Graduates will be named by the deans of their respective schools. I now invite Dr. Jennifer DiCicco to return to the podium to present the master's degree candidates for the School of Arts and Sciences. With a degree of Master's in Science, Counseling Psychology, Hadir Abdel Multaleb. Amanda Nolter. Gina Marie Gorey. Ashlyn Parks. <laughs> Jennifer Ann Gratus. <laughs> Desiree Fatima Desu. <laughs> Brianna D. Reef. Devin N. Miller. Congratulations. 
Anika Habed. Rachel D. Barnett. Alexa Zepchinski. Maria Diaz. Megan Ashley Higgins. Andrika O. Keller. Sandra Spencer. Mark P. Ryan Jr. Brittany Knight. Matthew C. Jarvis. Sarah Elizabeth Sinclair. Nicholas Esposito. Taj Malik Thomas Mickey. Mayata Knuckles. Catherine Susan Patton. Christina C. Chokas. Grace A. Stackhouse. Madison Grace Walsh. Miriam Kachvelli. I now invite Dr. Christy Ringen, Dean of the School of Business, to present the master students from the School of Business. Marie Rosedale. Danielle N. Diamond. And Sharina. Wilnice Destin. Chanel Chelsea Charles. Congratulations. Rasha Oda. Congratulations. Brooke Sheffield. Congratulations. Laura Puglisi. Rebecca Marley. Congratulations. Alexandria Arabia Gibson. Congratulations. Jennifer Lynn Capobianco. Congratulations. Kelly Ann Yates. Victoria L. Yang. Congratulations. Yaban. Yaban. Annalyn Yaban. Woo! 
Timothy J. McCall. Richard Leonard Jones. Francis L. Velasquez, Master of Science in Accountancy. Congratulations. I now welcome up Dr. Patricia Jorgensen, who will give you the candidates for the School of Education. For the degree of Master of Education, Jacqueline Yvonne Staples. Edward C. Dingley III. Melinda A. Barno. Chelsea Broadhurst. <laughs> Catherine Reppert. Emily N. Ferrigno. Is Miguel Mac Madova Jamie Rose Goldberg Nicole Caffey. Taylor M. Sloan. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Emily N. Zainan. Dawn Engelman. Brianna Joy Bennett. Amy Taylor. Lily Danielle Bauer. Corinne White. Sarah Preston D'Alessandro. Tina Marie Cavello. Bridget Pause. Alexandra Delaney Martin. Jessica M. Meister. Andrea M. Ferenchak. Danielle Shyrock. Justin, 
Justin Hunt. Rebecca Joy Weisgerber. Danielle M. Delaney. Bethany Venable. Jack Loylin Shu Oberholzer. Jeffrey M. Camp. Molly Rose Delaney. Natasha Sapp. Teresa Metti. Kara Bowers Claudia M. Donahue Carly E. Heim Kelly McMahon Allison Marie Dunkerley Shannon Boyle Alexis P. Nickel Sharon Malazi Jose Iguina Jennifer Lynn Cornine Heather L. Farrow <laughs> Kathleen M. Parsons <laughs> Maria A. Theodoro Caroline Bushka Hatala <laughs> Tiffany A. Evans <laughs> Nicole Marie McCrane Sirazam Munira Angele R. Hayes Rachel A. 
Slutsky. Ashley Diggs. Christine E. Sionia. Artesia K. Moore Leach. Christina Maria Cologne. Easy name, thank you. Sandra Riley. Craig Williams. I invite Dar Dr. Margaret Harkins to the podium. Avani Rajkodia. Thank you. You're welcome. Chinu Sajan. Brittany Donovan. Jamie Milligan. Shannon Maddle. Megan Wygand. Sean Woodward, Woodard. <laughs> Samia Forrest. <laughs> Nilda Ortiz. Gosha McDonoghue. Are you done? <laughs> Jennifer Rodriguez. <laughs> Angela Gutman. Hello. <laughs> Lindsay Michelle Klein. Kathleen Teresa Rohan. Yvette Renee Bernard. Esther Hyatt. Julia Scarbeck. Jenny Lee. <laughs> Helene Fink. <laughs> Susan Fisher. <laughs> Donna Gross.
I now invite President Prisco to deliver the official charge. How's it feel holding those diplomas, huh? Thank you, Dr. Robbins, and thank you to our deans, faculty, and staff who have guided each of you to where you are today, to our graduates of 2023. Congratulations, you did it. officially ask you to stand, I've been asked to give you a charge as the president. And charged you have through rigorous coursework, a health pandemic, new relationships, and the many joys and challenges along the way that have brought you to here today. Perhaps you were uncertain about what to expect during your journey, and yet you are here. You have arrived. We know that earning your degree takes a village. We know that the people around you, your family and friends, were there for you as you pursued your degree. And I know firsthand what a dedicated effort it takes to achieve this. The percentage of the U.S. population with post-baccalaureate degrees is just 13%, so that makes you part of an exclusive group. So my message to you today is be fearless. Don't be afraid to take chances and to do hard things in pursuit of your passions. To be afraid is to be human. Conquering that fear will always be empowering. Look at what you have already accomplished. You arrived at Holy Family with curiosity and thorough, careful study, intentionality, and applied knowledge. You leave with a deeper understanding of your field of study, <clears throat> and hopefully of yourself. <clears throat> you are all technically savvy and yet balanced by your humanity and by the care you have demonstrated in forging real and lasting relationships with one another and throughout the Holy Family community. As noted in John Sexton's seminal work, Standing for Reason, he draws from a, a lecture delivered at the Kennedy Library in 2008 by then Prime Minister Gordon Brown, who called on leaders of the world to seize the moment. And I think you'll get why I thought this quote was important for us. Brown notes, nothing in President Kennedy's enduring legacy has greater importance than his words on independence in 1962, when he proposed a declaration of interdependence so if the 1776 Declaration of Independence stated a self-evident truth that we are all created equal, JFK's Declaration of Interdependence added another evident truth, that we are all of us, all of us throughout the world in this together. As the Reverend Martin Luther King would say, we are part of an inescapable web of mutuality. Furthering this theme, Adam Smith, in the theory of moral sentiments, describes what he calls circles of empathy. In fact, it's exactly what Dr. Bailey was speaking about. In essence, our support for each other, which starts in our families and among our close friends, can extend into the larger community in ever-expanding circles of solidarity. So carry our concept of family, of connection with you. As I think about the prospects that lie ahead, each of you with your own unique abilities and, and expectations about what your future and your field will bring, what a promising future awaits you all. Despite all the scary stuff, you have been prepared. So go out into this world, do well, do good for your families, for your communities, and for our greater society. I look forward to hearing from you so you can tell me about all the things you're going to accomplish in the future. And know that you will always hold a very special place 
in the ongoing story of educational excellence at Holy Family University. I now invite all of our candidates to stand. Okay, now I get to do this. By the power conferred upon Holy Family University by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and by virtue of the recommendation of the faculty, along with the approval of the Board of Trustees, I now formally confer upon all whose names are in the official Holy Family University register as having completed their respective academic programs of study. Congratulations with the graduates of 2023, turn your tassels. Okay, we're going to have a follow just one more benediction before we officially close, okay? Hold on. I now invite Dr. Renu Elsa Steven, class of 2023, to offer the closing prayer. Let's all stand. Let's pray. Dear God, this day, we, the graduates, are fulfilling your will by rejoicing in you and being thankful for everything you have given us. We celebrate our accomplishments aligned with your purpose and grace. How blessed we are to have our family and friends witnessing this achievement of ours. We recognize your favor and grace in our lives as you have helped us reach where we are today. We honor our parents, teachers, and relatives who have helped us, prayed for us, and molded us to become who we are today. Thank you for our partners, siblings, friends, and colleagues who stood with us in all our highs and lows. We thank you in a special way for our precious little ones, for brightening our lives with laughter, fun, and of course, a little bit of stress. More than anything, we thank you that we are alive and standing here to glorify your name. Loving God, you are good, and all that you do is good. We are grateful for our education, guidance, professors, and campus community that we experienced during our time at Holy Family University. Help us to be responsible towards you, our society, and ourselves in our next chapters of our life. And finally, help us to impart the values we have learned from our university to our families and community. Amen. Thank you. Just a, a couple more things. <laughs> Please join us in singing the alma mater of Holy Family University, led by Eric Nelson and accompanied by pianist Dean Schneider. Hail to thee, the alma mater. Listening to our song of praise, teaching love, <coughs> be mother hell, guardian of our student days. On our hearts thou hast engraved lasting lines of her old need. Ten your
to 